Hi everyone, welcome to the Digitizing the Real World webinar. Today we're going to explore Edge AI with Google Cloud Anthos at the heart of it. Um, in hopes of building a smarter world by bringing the power of artificial intelligence to your exact points of data. Today's amazing speakers include Anil Rodney, he's a customer engineer at Google Cloud, and David McDaniel, we know him as Mac. He's our VP of Professional Services here at Quinix. Quinix is a proud Google Cloud partner who helps organizations find a smarter, faster path to Google Cloud. Without further ado, let's kick things off and I'll hand it over to Mac. Those are one group of things you're, you're managing. Then you've got uh, things like points of presence, the uh, network edge or the telco edge. And this is um, the, the most connected piece of the, ned, the edge to your data center or your cloud location, basically. And you'll have uh, edge routers, uh, CMTS devices, or 5G uh, radio antennas. Uh, you may have uh, GMAX, the Google multi-access edge uh, compute. Uh, so you could have, uh, potentially across uh, a country, you could have hundreds of these locations. And that would be referred to as a network or a telco edge. So this is the closest or the, the furthest connected piece of equipment to your data center or cloud location. Then when you start moving past that, uh, you really get into the consumer or corporate or IoT edge. And you could have thousands or even tens of thousands uh, or millions of devices uh, at this uh, spread out across and they are connecting either via 5G or uh, a wired connection back to your data center or cloud location. Uh, things that will exist at the edge are things like cameras. Um, you, a, a car could be a, a smart car, a, autonomous car could be an edge location. It's got compute sitting in the trunk. It connects via 5G, uh, but it does things locally as well. Uh, you could have um, temperature sensors. And the key point here is when you're doing a lot of this remote work is you've got uh, compute requirements many times because sometimes with this connectivity, uh, this side of the edge, you don't always have great connectivity back um, bandwidth wise to your cloud location. So you want to be able to process things locally as well. And that's really where Anthos comes in is it can be deployed across many environments and connect your sensors, your cameras, your temperature sensors, uh, even your cars, uh, and give them local, low latency, uh, high speed uh, compute to do uh, various functions, which we'll get into. So another way of looking at it is the telco edge here on the, on the right, the telco or network edge is really the edge of their network. So the radio tower, the 5G connection, 4G connection, and things uh, will connect directly to that. So your your emergency dispatch, your repair maintenance trucks, uh, even potentially uh, your cell phones or tablets will connect right to that telco edge. Uh, and they don't tend to have a lot of compute locally, so you'll put compute at that uh, telco network edge so that you get low latency responses. The other side is really that consumer corporate edge where you've got a, a manufacturing facility, for example, with sensors and machinery, um, and you want to do things, you want to process uh, computer vision, AI and ML, for example, um, but you don't have the connectivity to send so much traffic up across the network. So you want to do this locally. So really uh, the edge becomes where you're operating or where your data is. And, and that's really kind of what the edge is and then where the edge is is really wherever you are it can be in multiple places if you've got say multiple manufacturing facilities or multiple hospitals each location would be an edge they would be connected by some sort of networking whether it's 5g or or a fixed line it's uh they are connected but not every place has the same connectivity so it's good to have that uh, compute capacity locally so you can uh, manage things even in partially disconnected or uh, sometimes disconnected states. 
So I really just wanted to level set on on what and where the edge is. And now I'm going to turn it over to Anil um, to talk about why edge. And then uh, he'll be describing quite a bit about AI and uh, that I'll come back and, and do a demo about later. Anil, take it away. Yeah, thank you, Mac, and, and welcome, everyone. So maybe the first question you have, um, as Sarah mentioned, I'm a customer engineer at, at Google Cloud. So in terms of our topic today, edge and AI, you may be wondering why a Google Cloud engineer is, is commenting and talking on edge AI. And, and, and I think this statistic, which came from IDC, starts to frame up sort of Google's perspective. And so what I want to do in the next few minutes is just share sort of our strategy and how we see and what we observe with customers around edge AI solutions, and then specifically map in uh, some of our capabilities, some of which uh, Mac already mentioned, like Anthos. And so the, the, the why edge is really while each and every day we're doing more and more on Google Cloud in terms of processing data, um, building AI models, what we recognize is what what IDC is calling out, which is the reality is a lot of the data is still stored, managed, analyzed, and kept right where it's produced at the edge, right? And, and so why is this? And Max already touched on a few of these. Um, certainly we observe customers who have data security or privacy concerns of, of keeping control of that data in their, in their facility on their edge uh, devices. Uh, certainly in manufacturing and different plant operation customers that, that I come across, a lot of times we're dealing either with facilities that have very low bandwidth to reach out to a data center or a public cloud, or in many cases, they're just completely uh, disconnected. So uh, the point here is that data sitting at the edge, where does Google and Google Cloud fit in for its customers? And we'll start talking about that on the next slide. And our observation here is that you may be uh, someone in the audience who's uh, been around IoT pilots or, or proof of concepts, those kinds of things. And what we observed is a lot of times we have these use cases that can be solved with IoT devices and processing data. Um, but early in that journey, what we see a lot is that unless the insights that are gained can be directly tied to better business insights or action, really what you end up having is, in an IoT solution, just data collection at the edge, right? And, and certainly there's more, that, more to it than just collecting data. Uh, if we sort of look at that insights um, circle in the middle there, there's a lot to unpack here in, in sort of an enterprise scale edge AI solution, right? So for those insights, a lot of times we're dealing with real-time visualizations or, or analytics around that data. Um, often we have like initial model training, um, but need beefier infrastructure that is, that is typically available at the edge for training and retraining those models. And then certainly if, if we have, you know, an accurate uh, model, we want to make sure we have an eye towards continuous deployment of net new enhancements to that models, improved accuracy. And to complicate that even further, right, a lot of times we're dealing with tens or hundreds or maybe even thousands of devices at the edge that those those models need to be deployed to. So our observation led us on the next slide to really call out five typical challenges we see across sort of the edge AI journey. Um, and, and these challenges, I would, I would call it almost become a checklist, right? If you have a net new project, or even if you're very versed in edge AI solutions, you wanna kind of come back to these five points to kind of make sure you're checking them off in your solution. And the first two I would really label as device management. We're not going to spend a, a ton of time there today, um, but certainly data availability, we need to ensure we're capturing data at that edge device so that we can train models, uh, do real-time inference, as well as retrain those models. And then certainly security uh, is always important, right? So we need to ensure that you know, appropriate controls are in place to prevent data loss, exfiltration, that kind of thing. So those are definitely uh, uh, two categories of challenges we keep our eyes on. What we'll probably spend more time today talking about is the last three, which really gets into the AI or the predictive components of these solutions. And so by model complexity, what I mean there is not only can the models be complex in terms of the problem you're trying to solve, but really the complexity across the entire data science life cycle. So if you think you know across that life cycle from model ex experimentation, evaluation, ultimately deployment, that can be a lot to manage, especially when you're talking at scale with, again, dozens, hundreds, thousands of devices. 
and then scale would be the the the, the another another challenge that we we want to address early and often. Um, as we all know, when we have a good model, an accurate model that's leading to those business insights, um, we're not going to deploy it once, right? We're going to want to continuously deploy, improve the accuracy, retrain, and and really all do that all while providing the type of operations management we're used to just in our data centers. And ultimately, when we have a good model and we're getting a tremendous amount of insight and business value, it becomes a mission critical application. So that really, again, speaks to that operations management um, component of these challenges. So again, kind of a checklist uh, when we think about AI concepts that you may want to deploy at scale to the edge. And so on the next slide, to kind of get ahead of these challenges, just a little peek into how we think about them at, at um, Google. So again, to start calling out some services we typically see as part of edge AI solutions, um, you know, in that device management and data acquisition, uh, certainly data acquisition, um, we have our IoT core service. Um, in, in terms of looking across the diversity of devices and how we're capturing that data in a secure fashion. Um, foundationally on Google Cloud, we have our identity and access management service. So that, that's really the foundation of that is our overall security posture at Google. And then sometimes we see additional services specific to uh, data security. So for example, our data loss prevention API from Google Cloud, that can assist with auto classifying uh, sensitive data, governing that data all at the edge. Um, but we'll, we'll spend more time talking about today is those predictive components. So like, so how do we do AI at the edge? And so I call out a couple examples here. This isn't exhaustive. But in terms of that development complexity, we typically see AutoML as a service. It's part of our Vertex AI platform, which I'll talk more about here in a moment. Um, but really, again, it's trying to abstract some of that complexity. You bring your data and leverage Google's technology to actually build the model for you. And an example we'll look at here is AutoML vision or video. Um, so we'll see that in a moment. And then again, scaling just one example as part of our, our Vertex AI platform. Uh, a managed service to orchestrate and build AI pipelines that would provide that continuous deployment uh, or ultimately and hopefully achieve ML ops. So what we'll see on the next slide is not only do we want to address these challenges, but we really have an overarching goal to address these challenges at Google scale. Again, just knowing what we do is Google and, and our position in the AI market, like we certainly have tons of services on Google Cloud as well as access, uh, accelerators, reference patterns to, to really help you in your edge AI initiative. But if you look at sort of this mission statement here at Google, like the overarching goal is really to ensure you're producing intelligent solutions at enterprise scale. And so like if you kind of parse out that statement, when we look at uh, our research or development, the capabilities we provide on Google Cloud, you know, our goals are really end-to-end -end or enabling end-to-end -end model deployments and ML ops to fleets of edge devices. And again, fleets, we're talking, you know, think thousands and tens of thousands of devices. You may have much less than that, but we want to make sure that our, our services and capabilities scale. And all along, you know, as, as Google Cloud, we recognize the importance of edge. And, and so we want to provide uh, cloud services that append and assist with things like data and model management. So if we move on to the next slide, let's talk a little bit about how we do that, specifically with some of our Google Cloud capabilities. Um, and, and Mac's going to get into some of the weeds on, on some of these solutions that, that Quinix has actually built and deployed for our customers. Um, but, but there are two services that, that tend to be at the center when we talk about edge AI. Uh, and those are Anthos and Vertex AI. So just as an introduction, you know, Anthos is our managed application platform that really extends Google Cloud services and, and quite frankly, our, our engineering best practices to your specific environment. And that can be whether it's your data center, whether it's an edge appliance, whether it's Google Cloud or even another public cloud. And then Vertex AI at the highest level is a unified ML ops platform to help data scientists, machine learning engineers, uh, increase experimentation, deploy faster, uh, and ultimately manage models with, with confidence. So we're going to dive into these, these two particular services just in a little bit more detail here. But, but first, on the next slide, let's just look at a, a, a simplistic example of where we might start leveraging 
both Ant Anthos and uh, Vertex AI. Um, now, while this is simplistic, um, I will call out this is a reference pattern that we at Google and our customers and with our, our partners like Quinix see quite often in manufacturing or other industries in and around manufacturing that are that are trying to predict quality control issues. And in this case, we're looking at an automobile manufacturer. And kind of in that left center, right, we have the vehicle quality control station. So you can imagine this is armed with cameras, processing data, providing inference, um, maybe on an edge accelerator like, like an edge TPU as just an example. And then we certainly have a model, right? We, we may have a good model out of the gate, but as new quality issues arise, so this is an automobile, right? Maybe, maybe our model is missing a scratch on a part of the car that we didn't see before. And, and that model needs to be retrained, right? And so on the top there, it's talking about we're missing some defects because it's below a certain confidence threshold or something like that. So ultimately we need to retrain that model. And to do that, we may need to take that video feed and, and relabel those defects. And actually as part of Vertex AI, we actually have a human labeling service as part of Google Cloud where um, you know, we provide a team and if, if, if you give them basic instructions over your data on, hey, we're seeing a new type of scratch on the lower right bumper, here's what it looks like, can you go find this in my data set? They'll actually do that labeling for you so that ultimately you can submit that back to retraining that model. And in this case, on the right hand side, we're leveraging AutoML Vision, uh, which is one component of the Vertex AI platform um, and it really allows you once that data is labeled, you can supply that data and Google will actually create the model for you. And I'll spend a little bit more time on that here in a moment. And then once your data science team is happy with the accuracy of that model, you want to obviously deploy it back out to the edge. Um, so to push that retrain model, this is where Anthos would come in. So we would lay that, that model on a container and allow Anthos to manage that deployment to one to end devices out there. So in this very simplistic example, I mentioned AutoML and I mentioned that's part of Vertex AI platform, but that's really just one component. So if we move on to the next slide, let me dig in just a little bit deeper with Vertex AI. And by the way, you may have heard, we just last week uh, announced some new features, some new enhancements to this product set and also rebranded the name. So you may relate to this as Google Cloud AI platform or the unified Cloud AI platform. It's now called Vertex AI with these enhancements and capabilities. But really it's a range of capabilities fit for developers, um, citizen data scientists, all the way to your data science practitioners, which I know many of you are. And so when we build in capabilities into Vertex, we think of it in three broad buckets. On the left-hand side, really our APIs. And, and often this is aimed at developers, right? So um, in this little video here, if your use case had a need to detect an automobile on a video, you don't need to bring any of your data. There's no training. We've, we've solved that problem. You would just uh, leverage our Google Vision API, and it would do a great job at labeling that, that particular object. Moving on, custom more custom AI. Um, oftentimes, AutoML, it's sort of a mixed bag of our citizen data scientists as well as our, our data scientist practitioners. But here, we're really saying bring your data for your specific problem. Uh, product problem and auto ML is really think of it as ML on top of ML. It will go and look at the shape of your data, the quality of your data and tr essentially traverse Google brains library of algorithms and models to produce back a model uh, that's, that's predicting whatever you want labeled with a certain level of accuracy back to you. And, it, and by the way, it will also provide, you know, the relevant statistical details that could be evaluated by your data scientist team to kind of, vet that it is an accurate model and it's doing what it intended to do. And then on the far right, end-to-end -end AI, right? So this is a lot of the tooling that your data science team would leverage from Google Cloud and really a full platform of managed services like notebooks, automated AI pipelines, model management, um, that's all baked in there. So to kind of look at that in a little bit more detail, let's go to the next slide. And this just really blows out Vertex AI and there's a lot under the hood here. Um, obviously we could spend much more than the time we have today to dig into each of these services. But I will, I'll, I'll make a quick plug as a resource after this talk. Um, if you search for the Google Data, sorry, Google Cloud Data Summit, we actually have a half day conference tomorrow, starts at 9 a.m. Pacific, where we have tracks digging into these uh, services specifically. 
or certainly follow up with Mac and the Quinix team who could, could kind of go deeper here. But at the, at the highest level, the point I want to call out here is when you look at Vertex AI, it's the workflow across the top, which is our goal, right? Making ML easier at every stage of that developer workflow. Uh, so in the blue, I've already talked a little bit about auto ML capabilities. And again, that's where you're bringing your data and fast tracking your model uh, production, um, leveraging Google, Google Cloud. In the green, we, you can see we expand uh, quite a bit out, right? And I've already mentioned like the human data labeling services in there, uh, the AI pipeline orchestration across the entire workflow. Model management is a capability as a managed service within there. So again, not to dive into all of these, but to kind of showcase the robustness of how uh, Vertex AI can accelerate the model development. And what I'll call your attention to is as we move out to the right, you start seeing things like edge and monitoring and deployment. And this is really where Anthos can add some flexibility to your solutions. So if we go to the next slide, um, again, we think we do as Google a pretty good job with, with AI and our, our product and feature set with, it, with Vertex AI. But with Anthos, what that brings to the table is regardless of the location of where you want your application, or in this case, your model, your AI model to function, um, uh, we want to make it. Uh, we want to bring to to the table the simplicity and the power of cloud technology. So, again, Anthos is an open platform. It lets you run your app, or in this case, your AI model, anywhere, very simply, very flexibly, securely. Um, and Anthos embraces open standards. So, again, you can take your model that you built, and our goal is build once and deploy anywhere, and without any modifications. Right? Take your model unmodified and um, deploy that to maybe on-premise uh, on existing hardware investments or in Google Cloud, which we would love, or even another public cloud. And another unique thing about Anthos is that it's 100% software-based, right? So you, you actually can get up and running very quickly on your existing hardware, right? There's no, Anthos is not going to force any type of hardware stack refresh or anything like that. Uh, so if we move to the next slide, let me talk a little bit about what customers are doing with the combination of, of Vertex AI and Anthos. And again, I, I don't want to steal Max Thunder because I know he's going to dig into a few of these industry use cases. But needless to say, Vertex AI is leading the way in solving some of these cross-industry prediction problems. And, and you add in Anthos, and many, many of these can be easily solved at the edge. Um, now, not all of these necessarily I would call as an edge use case, but if I kind of pick on a few, like if we think in retail, you know, oftentimes maybe we're doing a recommendation and we want to do that at a kiosk or a point of sale terminal. Um, in healthcare, we could think about telehealth, um, like remote patient care, maybe uh, cameras reading images or charts at the edge to provide that feedback to, to the patient. Um, when you look at like gaming and media and manufacturing, they tend to be littered with different edge use cases that you can see there. And so that kind of gives you a perspective. And, and one other resource I, I, I'll call out before I, I close down and hand back to Mac here is um, if you're sitting in one of these industries or you're partnered with someone in one of these industries and, and one of these use cases catch your eye, just do a search for, for Google reference patterns or reference architectures. A lot of times, you know, partners like Quinix have solved these problems over and over again, and they give us those feed, give us Google that feedback uh, for those repeatable patterns that really can accelerate solving some of these problems. So if we go to the next slide, just to kind of uh, close out before I hand off to Mac, really like to summarize Google's investments in Edge AI, we really we aim towards these pillars, these four pillars as a goal. So I already talked about build once, deploy anywhere, and this is really the Anthos story. So that could be the edge, which we're going to talk about more today, but it also could be anywhere else your model needs to run. Uh, we have a focus on speed to production, so really increasing the developer and data science productivity you know, by freeing up that need to manage underlying infrastructure, really the serverless story here. Um, we know accuracy is king when we build these models, so being able to enable our, our data science teams to quickly optimize and, and build better and more accurate models. And then last but certainly not least, you know, an eye towards, there's a whole team, right, behind these, these typical edge AI solutions, whether it's analysts, engineers, data scientists, partners, right, making sure that each of these services that we provide uh, really enable seamless, seamless collaboration. So, 
with that, I'm going to go ahead and head, uh, hand back to Mac, um, and you can take it away, Mac. Great. Thank you, Anil. <clears throat> Great information. Um, so I'm going to start with a little bit on how how AI really does apply to the edge practically. So um, you know whether you're processing data, uh, wherever you're processing it, many times it's going to be at the edge. Either it's going to be in your data center, which could be considered an edge if it's on-prem or or even in a, in a colo. Uh, you've got very low latency, uh, lowest network needs, and very cost-effective. So instead of moving a whole bunch of data around to then process it with AI, uh, you can just uh, run Anthos in your data center and uh, on bare metal or on top of VMware even and do your uh, ML inferencing right there. If uh, you're running multiple locations, uh, for example, manufacturing or uh, healthcare, where you've got hospitals or manufacturing plants, uh, you, are, you are already at the edge. That's where your data lives. So again, most effective to process it there, uh, perform analytics or uh, AI inferencing uh, right there. Again, low latency, lowest network needs, and most cost effective. We're working with a number of manufacturing sector companies where their plants are, are kind of uh, dis pretty distanced from uh, any large uh, area where they get good uh, connectivity. So uh, having uh, low bandwidth requirements is a, is a very big bonus for them. So what we're going to do is talk about how us, uh, Quinix, um, a very solid enterprise um, Google Cloud partner, we really help customers uh, overcome some of these issues by strategically implementing these Google Cloud solutions that Neil has done uh, a great job describing. So uh, as you mentioned, Anthos is, is a really amazing platform. Um, for those of you who are familiar with Kubernetes, it is an implementation of Kubernetes based on the open source standard. Um, you know, Google was the, the creator of Kubernetes, uh, so them running it uh, well is, is not a surprise. Uh, the, the neat thing about Anthos in particular is it allows you to have a common K Kubernetes implementation uh, on your own bare metal, on VMware, in Azure, in AWS, or in GCP. So it gives you that, that great flexibility to run the workload, whether it's an application or an ML, infer ML inferencing engine. It gives you that ability to run it wherever you want to. Uh, it's also got things like uh, consistent built-in monitoring, logging, tracing, uh, gives you the ability to uh, implement SLAs and SLOs very easily, a single pane of glass, so you can look at all of your Anthos uh, implementations, no matter where they are, uh, in a common place with one set of tools. Uh, so it's a very efficient and effective platform to run on. Some of the points to uh, remember that the big pain points that, that get a lot of people when they're trying to um, implement these type of solution is managing the platform, deploying models, and having observability. So these are three real strong uh, cases for involving Anthos, and we'll get into those here. So in the manufacturing uh, sector, there's a lot of different use cases. We picked a few here uh, for local AI and ML processing of equipment logs. So all these uh, high-tech and even some low-tech uh, manufacturing equipment, uh, they produce information, uh, logs or uh, counts or things like that. And you can build models to uh, do anomaly detection on the logging data so that, again, you don't have to send reams of logs that just say, hey, I successfully did this, uh, when really that's not providing any value of issues. So this reduces your data sent to centralized location, and it can be used to predict equipment maintenance or uh, failures uh, before they happen, which is always a more cost-effective way of uh, managing your equipment. Another big area uh, is human safety monitoring. So ensuring that people and machinery interactions are as intended. Uh, as these machines are very big and, and heavy and have hydraulics, um, you know, you don't want to get too close to them. And we've built a demonstration that will show um, that shows how you can use uh, ML inference engine at the edge using computer vision 
uh, to protect humans, protect people um, or other assets from be coming in contact unintended with any kind of machinery. We also have some projects that we're implementing with uh, some of our uh, partners with building uh, quality assurance. Uh, so uh, one is uh, chicken patties. Uh, so we're, we have a camera over a chicken patty line and making sure that the patties are properly shaped and, uh, and coated with the, the materials they're supposed to be so that, and packaged so that um, you don't have to uh, have people necessarily standing there doing that. And it gives you that, that product visual check before being shipped. And then another area is uh, process completeness. So many times there's multiple steps to a process of assembling some piece of equipment, and we can ensure that each of the steps is completed, uh, com completed successfully and the product is properly assembled. And you can do quality assurance this way as well. So there's a number of use cases we're going to be looking at. I'm, I'm going to dive deep into this, um, and then we'll talk about how the same kind of architecture and thought process can go into uh, healthcare and telco as well. So here's our reference architecture that we've used at, at multiple customers for doing Anthos at the edge. Uh, so we have a component or set of components that deploy into Google Cloud Platform. So you don't have to worry and manage that. Uh, ML ops is a, is a term that's used uh, by quite a bit of um, machine learning uh, enthusiasts and, and how to deal with the machine learning model itself. So uh, I've got a slide coming up that talks about the life cycle of, of the model. But in general, you've got your machine learning operations, your uh, automation, infrastructure operations, and model performance. And really what that's doing is uh, monitoring the infrastructure that the model's running on at the edge and also uh, looking at the model performance. So when you're inferencing uh, based on images, for example, if you don't get a certain confidence level, you could send that image back up to the, the cloud to have a person look at it uh, and see if the model needs to be retrained or adjusted to handle that situation and, and produce a higher level confidence uh, inference. And then at the edge, you would have your Anthos powered stack there or with a GMAC or Anthos uh, bare metal or on-prem, uh, you would typically use Anthos service mesh and Anthos configuration management. Uh, you'll have some GPUs like the NVIDIA Tesla T4 we generally use, and then your array of sensors, whether those are RTSB cameras or temperature sensors or any kind of other sensors, they feed right in locally to your Anthos stack, um, and that's where you also have your models deployed. And this is your kind of AI model, traditional and modern life cycle. So the life cycle is, is very similar, um, regardless whether it's traditional or modern. You really start at the top with building a model. Uh, you've got data you need to pump in to train the model and then evaluate the model, which are the metrics coming out. You choose an eventual model and you want to productionalize it. Uh, you've got testing data that you want to validate some of the characteristics and performance of the model. And then you've got some application code to use the model. And then you need to monitor and have observability of the model and its performance. So really what we're looking at for a traditional, every step is manual. You've got to do all these things yourself. Uh, they, they are very time consuming. Uh, they require expert skills in model development, model tuning, training, performance evaluation, uh, and other aspects of the life cycle. And then you need more skills for model deployment and application coding. So all this adds up to uh, a, a situation where um, industry has indicated that about 85% of models never really make it to production uh, that are built. So now we'll compare that to uh, modern uh, model life cycle. And really what we're talking about with AutoML, uh, part of the Vertex platform, is you're not developing the model. You're telling, um, you're telling AutoML what type of model you want to build, and then it is building that model for you. Uh, the training is automatic. You still have to supply the, the tagged data, uh, and, and that's really a very important piece, but 
the you're not manually operating the training. You, as you're creating the data set, you identify the, the training data and the testing data and the validation data, along with all the object notations. Um, but that automatically creates your, your model. Um, it automatically tunes it. Uh, you can still have control over some of the tuning aspects, but it's not something you have to do on every different model you create. Uh, you get automatic testing. So as part of the data you upload, you identify a percent that's for testing your model, and it will automatically execute that, giving you a confidence and, um, and reliability score, recall score. And then basically you have a model as a container automatically created. So you've, in a very short period of time, you've traversed this entire life cycle. Uh, and now what I'll do is I'll go show you how we do each of these steps using Google services. And uh, we'll call out each one. So we'll go through one through five. You can see a couple of the steps on the right too are handled in the same step. So basically step one is uh, creation and training of your model. Uh, when you create a data set uh, in AutoML, you define whether you're doing single label classification, multi-label classification, or object detection. And this is for an auto ML vision uh, model. There are other types for dealing with uh, raw data, um, raw numeric data or text data. Uh, this is really specific to vision. But you can see here on the right, uh, I've uploaded some, some images. And in this case, I actually only uploaded 23 images. They were all labeled um, and I had four different um, uh, items that I, uh, basically uh, labels that I associated in every image. So there's gonna be the empty zone or the safety zone, a forklift, a pallet, and a person. And there could be more than one of each. And you can see here where I've uploaded this data and it shows every picture with all of my, um, my labels identified. So this happens uh, once you upload all the data, all the training happens automatically. So you can uh, train and retrain and perform validation automatically. Uh, so once you've uploaded the images, you click train a new model. You can see I've already got a model trained here and you can see its precision is estimated at 100% with a recall at 91.67%. Now, just to be fair, this was an incredibly simple model. I only had four different types of labels it had to recognize. There was very little variability. Um, so it, it, it's a very simplistic case. Having 100% uh, precision is not a common thing necessarily. But the nice thing is uh, we're really able to very easily train and validate your model. Uh, once you've trained it, you want to do some evaluation. So you can see here that uh, the results, again, after the training is performed, uh, you've got your total images. Uh, typically, you test. You have you reserve 10% uh, of your images uh, that you upload for testing. So in this case, that was only two images. Um, and we had 12 objects. You can see here at the top, we also have the ability to uh, change your confidence threshold and your IOU threshold. Uh, and you'll see on the right side uh, what those graphs look like as you uh, retrain or change the thresholds. And then deployment, uh, you do have actually multiple uh, options for deploying. You can deploy right into Google Cloud using that deploy model button there. Um, and this would be for uh, running models in the cloud, which is obviously an option. Um, but if you want to start moving it out to the edge, uh, you can deploy a TensorFlow Lite or a full TensorFlow um, implementation. The easiest way, though, especially at the edge, is to uh, have your model exported as a TensorFlow saved model um, in a Docker container. So this enables you very easily to download that. Uh, and basically, once you, uh, you can de deploy it for uh, additional testing using the deploy model, uh, you can download as the TensorFlow Lite or full TensorFlow, or you download and register the image, as I was saying, with the container uh, to deploy into uh, Anthos at the Edge. Uh, Google services include a uh, container registry, so it's very easy to take this model and automate its um, migration right into the Google Cloud registry for images. 
And then based on that, you could have, uh, again, more automation that takes your newly updated image and deploys it out to your edge locations. Here I show a, a cloud build uh, example where we're taking a image that's newly uploaded into the registry and deploying it both to a GKE cluster in GCP and down at the bottom, deploying it to an Anthos cluster on VMware. And that's running on-prem, basically. So now, now you're, you've trained a new model and you've pretty much automatically deployed it to your uh, testing environment. And then as far as that, that uh, problem of monitoring and observability, uh, with Anthos Bare Metal or Anthos on VMware, AWS or Azure, it comes with a uh, connection back to Google Cloud, so you get this single pane of glass monitoring. On the left, you can see I've got my logging for my ad service pod. Uh, so we've received events, and this is basically logging coming right out of the, the pod, and we haven't had to do anything to get this logging. It's, it's built into the system. On the right-hand side, you can see we've got some uh, CPU uh, usage per node of your Anthos cluster. And you can even compare, like I've co compared um, the top line there is uh, running at you know, 0.9 seconds uh, versus the highlighted line at the bottom or near the bottom is as 0.088 seconds. And then once you've deployed that model to the edge, you can see here uh, we've got a couple different containers running, and this is on my, uh, my local Anthos bare metal implementation, the CV runner and the CV init. Uh, CV init is a, is a Kubernetes job that runs and initializes the environment, and C runner is a combination of the model container deployed with uh, about 112 lines of Python code that capture uh, an image off my webcam and feed it into the ML inferencing engine and, and validate the results. So there is a way, uh, people might have been asking, where's the demo? Uh, the demo is right here. Uh, it's at this YouTube link and the full demo about, I don't know, 12 minutes or so is, is shown here uh, from start to finish and this is a real model I built in about nine hours uh, using Legos uh, on my office floor. So you'll see the entire, um, all, the, all the information you need based on that. Oh, I didn't actually plan on playing it. Hey there, welcome. Sorry, there we go. So now talking about applying the same uh, ML and AI capabilities at the edge into other uh, verticals, for example, healthcare. Uh, so local storage is a, is a problem, HIPAA compliant uh, data like x-ray images, MRI scans, uh, and other health information data. Uh, many hospitals want to keep that on premises, whether that's in their, their basement or their data center, or their colo, uh, they want to keep it uh, locally. So Anthos gives you an application platform where you can deploy containerized applications and manage all that data locally. It does give you, again, that same uh, fast AI processing. So since you're, you've got the data locally, you've got your AI processing locally, uh, you can do uh, cancer, EKG, and other imaging analytics to pre-screen for anomalies. And we've got another slide on that. Uh, and this is a, a popular trend in healthcare where they're using AI and ML to assist the professionals in doing diagnosis when there's a lot of data. So you might have an MRI scan that contains hundreds or thousands of images. And if a, the AI or an ML system can alert you to which scans, which images have potential problems, it's a lot quicker for diagnosis. And then you can also use um, ML for finding otherwise unnoticed correlations or patterns of symptoms and diagnosis relationships. So there's many times uh, multiple professionals involved in uh, treating a patient, and this gives them the ability to look at all that data in a single pane um, and be able to make these correlations automatically and much more quickly. And then another popular trend is uh, building customized treatments or medication dosing uh, specific to that patient. Uh, many medications 
um, vary in dosing depending on your weight, for example. And then another uh, last one is we'll talk about is, is suggesting common order groups based on the hospital provider and presentation of symptoms uh, from the patient. So many times uh, you will have different groups of orders based on what size hospital you are, or what type of provider you are. And this helps automate all that. So um, freeing up time for uh, providers to um, deal with patients more than dealing with computers. And here's an example of, of dealing with the MRI scans. So you could train your data here on the right, uh, identifying issues with lung scans, for example, and then as your patients are coming through, you're having the images processed by uh, the ML engine at the edge right in your hospital very quickly and quickly identifying any potential problems. And then on the telco uh, network, at, at their edge, there are a number of um, use cases. The two we'll focus on are really um, local AI and ML processing of equipment logs. And this, this type of equipment is really more of the 5G or 4G radio equipment. You know, each one of these layers of, of radio equipment produce logs as well. Um, with so much traffic going over mobile networks these days, you don't necessarily want to send that to a centralized location to process it. You really just want to know if there's problems. So running a, an antho stack in your telco edge and having it analyze this log data automatically and only sending alerts is a huge value. And then for certain industries like um, mobile gaming, they need very fast response times. So mobile gaming is a, is a $25 billion market in 2020. Uh, and then you've also got emergency response and service fleets who need the ability to communicate uh, in real time. So that's it for the different use cases. And uh, we would like to make an offer uh, if your organization, to see if your organization may qualify for a fully or partially covered test drive of Anthos. Uh, we do have Anthos pilot funds available. Um, to do so, you can click on the bit.ly link at the bottom and see if your organization qualifies. And then we can work with you to co-design your use case. And that would, uh, that would be working with us at Quinix. Uh, at this point, I would like to uh, thank everybody for their time and see if you have any questions we can answer. Well, I don't think, let me check and see if we've got any questions. All right, we've got the Lego demo posted. Uh, Christian is asking, is Google preparing a 5G edge solutions? URLC is AWS wavelength, for example. I think that would be a question for Anil, maybe. Yeah, <clears throat> Christian, I probably couldn't get in this specifics. What I could, what you could probably find in a pretty quick search is some of our strategic partnerships with 5G and, and sort of I'm, I'm stammering a little bit because I don't know what all is public yet. So definitely check out. You'll see where we're going, and you're going to get more news uh, as time goes on there. All right. If there are no more questions, we'll wrap it up for today. And again, thank you to Anil Rooney from Google. And thank you all for attending. We really appreciate your time. Take care, everybody.